Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the VF1A Armored Valkyrie. It's a pretty cool kit if you're a Macross fan. It's a very hefty boy, that's for sure, but it's got a lot of really great detail on there and with a little love, it's gonna look very nice. But let's go ahead and check it out for today's review. Alright guys, we'll start off taking a look at the box and its contents. As you can see, it's in a vertical style format here with some very cool artwork of the Valkyrie on there on the front. You got all these missiles and everything flying in the background. On the top of our box here, all of our logos, including the one I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be triggered by, the Big West right there. But the illustration on here is beautiful, really beautifully painted illustration work there. And credit to Tenjin for that, the illustration credits right there on the front of the box, which is nice. But on the side of the box here, you can get a sense of just how deep this box is. So there's gonna be a fair amount of stuff in here. On the one side, we have a little bit of line art right there and just images front and back of a fully built and painted sample there. It looks really cool, I gotta say and then some detailed images of all of the missile doors and everything open, so that's looking very cool. On the other side, the full versions of the line art front, back, and side there, so you can get an idea of all the details and the layout of everything. 4,000 yen, I believe, is the recommended price right there at the bottom of the barcode. And with that, let's go ahead and get the box open up. All right, pretty cool stuff here, and I also will say that I really like the color scheme on this one. Now, obviously, if you're gonna be painting it, you can custom paint it and in any color scheme that you might choose but if I can just find our way down here to the manual, I want to take a quick look at this. We got an extra long manual here to fit the shape of the box, I guess, showing a painted sample there of the model kit here on the back side of these fold-out pages. Here is the marking and painting guide here for you, so it's got the paints and then where all the markings are gonna go. If you guys noticed here, we have a quite large water slide decal sheet. This is gonna give you a ton of markings and a ton of variants, so you can choose which markings you wanna use on this, depending on which variant you wanna go for. Lots of numbers and everything on there, so you'll have plenty of markings for this. But the rest of the manual here is just gonna have your parts list there with a couple of grayed out sections of some leftover parts that you're not gonna use. The rest of this is just going to be the construction of the kit. Getting into the renders, we do have some polycaps here, PC01 and 02 for a couple more on there, all in gray. We also got this adorable little ribbon here, this little black plastic ribbon for the strap on the gun. So we'll see how that works. For the rest of the runners, the first few are from the Batroid kit, like here's runner A from the 172nd scale Batroid. Here's runner B, a much larger runner here from the 172nd scale Batroid. Runner D as well, and as you can see, all these are all in a nice light gray color. Runner F, we've got two of these, and runner G as well. There's some hand parts, weapons parts, and everything on there. Runner K here in clear, and then runner Q is from the Super Batroid kit, so a couple more parts on there. Now we get into the new armored parts, which are in this really cool light green, light olive green color. So this is runner AA, here's runner AB, and there's really great detail on some of these. See just some of these armor parts, all this really nice detail around on there. It's gonna look really good when this is all painted up. The rest of our armor parts here on runner AC, as well as runner AD. Runner AD having a section up here with the these little detail parts that you can slice off of there and then add onto the kit wherever you might want to use those. The rest here, all some more parts in light gray. So here is runner AE, AF, here there's a bunch of those missile parts, AG, some more of those and some very cool vent detail parts there. And AH, AI, AJ are all connected here in a little bit different color for this one. It's more of like a light lavenderish gray color. And lastly, runner AK is a couple more parts here in clear. All right guys, and here is the kit all built up. Now, just gonna say it right away, you know, straight out of the box, it's not that great a looking kit. It's definitely a kit that you're gonna need to show some love to, at the very least, doing some panel lining, throw the decals on there, throw some top coat on there, and it's gonna look a lot better. But obviously, this seems to be a model that's definitely intended for, you know, fully painting and doing all the works on that. So just keep that in mind if you are a fan of Macross wanting to get this kit. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at everything here. All of the exterior details and everything on the kit look great, so that's why I'm saying like once it's all painted up and you go through and detail everything, it's gonna look really good because there's a lot of really nice details around everything. 
it does all snap fit together. You don't really need a glue on anything. There are a couple of spots where I did go ahead and put some glue on just so that I could actually handle the kit in the review. If you just snap fit it together, don't use any glue and you just set it down and never touch it, you'd probably be fine. But at the very least, you are gonna need to use a little bit of glue on this one. So just make sure you have some on hand. There is gonna be a number of seam lines here and there, of course, but nothing really too bad. It's a lot of, it's mostly kind of on like the inner parts, like the inner part of the thigh there. Most of like the new outer armor pieces are made in a way that you don't have too much seam lines. Like here's a little bit there on the back, but overall not too bad on the outer areas. The clear parts up there on the top of the torso and the head look really cool. You do also have a couple of clear parts that go right here on the front of this like kind of sensor bit there on the front of the legs, but those ones don't snap fit into there. Those you have to glue. So I didn't glue those in yet. I'm just going to save those for once the kit is painted, but these ones up here you can just kind of snap fit in there temporarily. And then when you're disassembling the kit, you can take those off as far as like the armor opening gimmicks none of them actually open up it's basically you have to take this part off and then you have to uh, part swap out the actual connection piece so for like this one here on the top of the shoulder you're gonna swap that out for this piece which you can then plug back in there for that to be open like so and it's the same thing for the chest and the same thing for the legs so you take that out you need to swap out this connection piece here change that piece and plug that back in like so for that to be open and the missiles are arranged in a way that they kind of shoot out to the side so it may look a bit strange that the doors don't open more than that or they're not displayed open more than that if the missiles are pointing straight ahead they're gonna shoot right into that door there but they are kind of positioned to go off to the side like that then as for the legs down here these ones on the side and the ones on the back you're just going to remove this piece entirely here off the side and just replace that with the piece that the connection is off to the side instead of straight on plug that into there like that for displaying those and it's the same for the back here as well so aside from those parts just for our accessories here we have a set of hands that are just closed fists like there you can see on the kit at the moment we do also have two open hands here for the left side one is just kind of like an open resting hand like that and this one's supposed to be like a rifle support hand for doing a two-handed grip on your rifle and then for the right side we've got a trigger finger hand here which I've just gone ahead and already put here on the rifle this one yeah a lot of glue required for this one just to get everything to stick together in a way that you can actually handle it. And this uh, kind of ribbon part here is pretty tricky and I probably am just gonna swap this out with something different later, I guess, I don't know. You have to punch a hole in it and then like a peg for this little part here kind of pokes through that and it's very thin and I feel like it needs to be a little bit wider. It's like, I think probably two millimeters and if it was like three millimeters, I feel like that probably would have been wider. I don't know, maybe that would have not looked right, I don't know. But if you are planning on using the rifle, this is probably one of the parts of the kit that's gonna take the most amount of work just to get it you know, to look right. Whereas with the main kit goes, you have a couple of seam lines here and there, but overall, you know, it's gonna be a pretty straightforward build and paint. This one may take just a little bit of work for this. And then just to kind of briefly talk a bit about the articulation of this, it's not gonna be a like a very excellent articulated kit by any means, but you got some nice articulation up here at the head, the antenna here or whatever can also move back and forth, of course, but there you go, that part just kind of fell off there that's okay but that does move around pretty nicely for the shoulders here those are just going to be stuck just straight into there so they're not going to move forward and back at all you can bring the arm up to about 90 degrees there and you can see even with that the weight's kind of dragging it down a little bit but you got some rotation there at the elbow joint the elbow joint gives you about 90 degrees there the wrist is just on a small little ball joint there there's not going to be any articulation here in like the stomach section of the kit other than just like a little bit of bend side to side really that's kind of about it any forward movement of the leg at the hip section is going to be pretty limited just because this part at the top of the leg is just going to be running into the wings here at the backpack so that's kind of out of the picture you can spread the legs out to the side to about there which is not too much they're going to be pretty limited in terms of the range of the movement of your legs and even down here at the knee you've got a little bit of knee bend there but you can see if you bend it too far it's going to be popping out this part here at the front so pretty limited knee bend there as well and then you come down to these little feet sticking out at the bottom of these big massive legs here and these are actually quite loose here at the ankles which for a relatively heavy kit for how bulky it is up top to have little feet and weak ankles makes it kind of tricky to stand up so you're probably going to want to reinforce the ankles a bit just if you're planning on having it standing but uh, you got some detail there these close up and everything but the, of course the kit does not fully transform you can move the feet 
forward and back. And you can adjust the angle side to side a little bit here like that too for getting it to stand up. But mounting this up on some sort of base or some sort of rod or something you know, just to make it look like it's flying probably gonna be the better way to go. There's nothing like built into the kit for that, but all it would take would just be drilling a little hole up in there and just putting it up on a rod. Be simple enough. First size comparison here it is with a 144 scale Gundam kit. If you were to compare this side by side with a 100 scale Gundam kit, they'd probably be pretty similar in terms of their, their overall height. This one obviously just being much more bulky overall. And that's really gonna be kind of just about it of what I can show you here of the kit at the moment. Like I said, this is definitely a kit that needs some extra love to really show it off, uh, you know, to its full extent. Just because with the articulation and the opposability of the kit, there's not really a whole lot that you can do, as you guys will see here. So where this kit is really going to shine will be, you know, what you do with it as far as like the painting that you do with it, the finishing work that you do on it. The kit as itself on its own is just gonna be pretty basic. But like I said, there's a lot of potential there with all of the details and everything. And it's just a really cool design. For me, as someone who's really just not really into Macross all that much, you know, it's not a franchise that has a lot of designs that I'm really that into. I do like this one, it's pretty cool. And there's also, of course, the VF1J variant, if you guys prefer, that's another one that's also available. I preferred this one just because I like the look and the color scheme of it a bit more, but the details, like the head is a little bit different on them, but mostly, as far as I know, I think it's kind of mostly the same kit. But what do you guys think of it? Let me know down in the comment section below. Are you guys fans? Do you like this design? Is it one that you're excited to pick up for yourself? Uh, you can let me know down in the comment section. And of course, if you guys are looking for more mecha model kits and paints, tools, supplies, all that good stuff, you guys can check out the link down in the video description to USA Gundam store. We've got all that stuff there for you guys. You can check that out. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. If you'd like to also like and or subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. But hope you guys all have a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye, guys.